So, just when I was getting tired of formulaic samurai movies, I came across this gem. And honestly, I haven't seen a movie this mesmerizing since, well, probably Akira Kurosawa. For once, instead of checking to see how much time I had left every second, I was actually lost in the movie. I forgot I was watching something and instead I was in this beautiful country and time period. I haven't felt that in a very long time. Ame Aguru, also known as After the Rain, is a film that released in 1999. Legendary director Akira Kurosawa died right after writing the screenplay and completing the pre-production for this film. His producer's son offered the direction to his father's longtime assistant, Takashi Koizumi. But shooting began only when the French company Seven Film Cinema accepted to co-produce. The film had a fairly low budget, it was estimated $3.8 million at the time. After the Rain premiered at the Venice Film Festival on September 1999. It went on wide release in Japan on January 22, 2000. The film earned an exceptionally good reception around the world, and it even won numerous international awards. It might not be the most perfect movie, but it still remains a competent and loving homage to the late director Akira Kurosawa. Kurosawa's family was actually a big part of the process of making this film. His son, Hisao, was running Kurosawa Production Company and functioned as the producer. He also did that with Kurosawa's final films. Kurosawa's daughter, Kazuku, handled costume design as she had done so with Rhapsody in August and Madadeo. The film's screenplay, which had been written by Kurosawa alone, was based on a book by Shigeru Yamamoto, as well as his post-death film screenplay, The Sea is Watching, one I still have to see. So this is more of a slower paced story with strong moral messages and philosophy. Oh yeah, and it has a real Kenjutsu. This is by no means an action packed samurai film, and I went in knowing this. But actually, I was surprised by the amount of fighting in it. It's surprisingly well choreographed, and it's all real practice Kuryu techniques. One thing that makes this worth it for martial arts fans is the combat performance by musician turned actor Tarao Akira. He's pretty much a household name in the Japanese entertainment world. His action scenes shouldn't really come as a surprise considering that he worked in two other Kurosawa movies in the past. Not all samurai movies need to be bloody with angry men trying to cut each other in half. After the Rain is a beautiful example of this. Like in other Kurosawa films, this one is based on the tales of a masterless samurai. But this one has a very different personality than the Ronin movies that we're used to. It has a very original motivation on when it's necessary to fight. Misawa Ihai is a mature ronin suddenly finding himself living inside a small traditional hotel with his wife when the local river is flood. To pass the time and ease a growing tension with the other stranded travelers, he decides to invite everyone to enjoy a feast. Just to realize though that he doesn't quite have enough money to pay for it. Been there, done that. So the best solution a broke swordsman can do in a time like this is challenge local lords as samurai for money. Ihai's fighting skills impress Lord Shigaiki, played by Toshiro Mufuni's son, Shiro Mufuni. When you see the name Mufuni, you really know it's a Kurosawa film. He then offers him a position as fencing master in his court. 
退屈なことでござろうなどうじゃ退屈しのぎに城へ遊びに参られるか Ehi is a very skilled samurai, but soon we'll find out that that could be a bad thing. <laughs> the real story here is in the people. This is basically a window into the Japanese culture for outsiders, and it's a window to Japanese historical culture for the Japanese. After the Rain is an entertaining human drama. With a slow pace and extremely beautiful visuals. The visuals in this film make it look like it's very much a Kurosawa film, and it has that same kind of hard to describe feeling. I found myself constantly pausing it just to take in the nature scenes just a little bit longer. It kind of made me bummed that I'm not currently living in such a beautiful place. I'll definitely be re watching this movie every year just to get a healthy dose of those beautiful visuals. Hopefully, we get a Criterion Blu ray release. Another great element of this film is Ehi's kind persona. Rather than the typical Ronin that's looking for trouble, he's kind towards everyone around him and he tries to keep the peace and everyone out of trouble. He's the true embodiment of Budo. A real martial artist's mindset. He keeps his composure while in trouble. He's confident yet not pretentious, and he only fights as a last resort. <laughs> This has a different story than what we're used to from Kurosawa. There's a different style of humor that we didn't really get in his older films. His last film, Matadeo, had a very similar style that focused on just average life. I think after the years of just making epics and fantasies, that Kurosawa kind of just wanted to make something simple. A simple comedy about just good people who smile and make jokes and laugh. I think that if he was alive and directed this film, it wouldn't have looked exactly like this, but I think in the end, he would have been pleased with the end result. It's hard to say whether this film is a tragedy or not, and the ending doesn't really resolve everything. Instead, it wants us to reflect on the characters and their actions. It's definitely a film that you're gonna think about days or even weeks after it's over. I feel like this is a film that I'm never gonna forget, and that's a great thing for a movie to achieve. After the Rain is both a beautiful and deep samurai film, and It lets the spirit of Kurosawa live on, even after he left us. This is a must see for anyone, and I really do believe that this is just a movie that everyone has to see. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching, guys, and don't forget to check out my Patreon to help this channel grow.